In this video, we will go over adding and editing property records. I'm starting us from the My Listings page, as this is where you want to add your listings from. To get started with this process, you'll click Add a Listing. And the first step of adding a listing is searching for your property record by entering an address. So you'll just want to start by filling in the address. As you do so, any addresses that match what you've begun filling in will start to appear down below. Um, you just want to click on the one closest to your property. I'm going to select this one. This is the building that I would want to use because it is the right address, but I did want to show you what you would do if there was not yet already a property record in the system for the parcel that you're adding. So I'm just going to scroll um, to a more empty area. I can see um, if I hover over this parcel here, there's a question mark that just indicates that there's not yet a property record in the system. And that's the property I'm going to create today. So I'm going to click on the question mark. This is going to pop up a little note that says we don't yet have a new property record. You can add a note to us in the um, system that will go to the research staff. Just let us know while you're, why you're entering the list or the property record. Um, so you could just put something as simple as the new property record needed. And then you would select the asset class of the listing. Keep in mind when you are selecting a category, the category should be set as the um, largest use of the building, not necessarily what your space is going to be used for. So maybe you have a retail space at the bottom of a building that's primarily office space. You would want to select office here and then in your listing indicate um, that you have a retail space. I'm going to go ahead and just click office. Um, so you can see what that looks like and then I'm going to hit create property. It's going to load for a moment and then it's going to pull me into the property slash building screen. Let's me know that a new property has been created but what we do suggest first is going through this property edit screen here and just making sure that the information that the system's built in is one accurate and two that all the required information is filled in or we might need to follow up with you. Um, so some things to note when you're on this page, anything that has a little red dot here indicates that that's a required field. So you'll want to fill it in to submit the property record. I'm just going to fill in one and leave the rest blank so you can see what happens if you try to save it and making um, only one of those required entries. When I go to hit save, I'll get this notice down below of all the items that I'm missing um, that I haven't filled in. And then also all the required fields um, that I didn't fill in are going to highlight with red as well well. Um, so you can see here, not all of them have been updated properly with that red dot. Um, so you still want will want to fill those in. So that's the great thing about that secondary notice when you're missing something. So I'm just going to fill in some information. So you can see what this looks like. Another thing to keep in mind here as you are filling this in is this little blue box over here on the left is going to update for you and tell you what pieces of information you're missing. So I'm just going to kind of keep scrolling down. Down here in the bottom, you can kind of see an image of what the parcel looks like. So you can confirm that you're selecting the right property. Then you can also request to add an image here. I'm going to go and hit save. Now that I've submitted all of those changes or made all the required changes I need to to submit, it's letting me know I'm submitting an official change. What that will do is come to the SEBA staff for review. Keep in mind when you're doing this, um, that the SEPA staff does review these changes within one to two hours during business days um, and you will see the change right away on your end. However, the public site won't see those changes until they've been approved by the staff. So if you wanted to send your client over a copy of what it's going to look like once the changes go through, you can view that through your account. So we do suggest creating a report on your end and then sending the report that you've created. Here you add it again, you can add a note to the staff. So I'm just going to say test prop comments or comment, and then I'm going to submit my changes. I can see at the bottom my property has been saved, and then if I scroll up to the top, you can also see that the edits have been submitted. And again, this is exactly what the screen is going to look like when you want to edit a property slash building record. I'll also show you how to do that on a property that you have existing listings at. Um, so I'm going to go back to the My Listings page. And then um, if I wanted to make changes to the property record attached to one of my listings that touch stone building, I'd go ahead and hit edit listing. Takes me into listings, but if I go over to this property slash building tab, it takes me into that um, screen that we saw as soon as we created our property record. And just like I did on that previous screen, I'd make those changes here. The red dots indicate required fields. If I click on them, that little blue box is going to update for us and tell us what information they'd like to see. And that's it for adding property records and editing them. Thank you.